Welcome to the missing lesson. Thanks to Kate for pointing out that uh, we we did uh, introduce semiconductors, but we never spoke about the PN junction, which was the second lesson, the lesson that never happened. Okay, so here we go. All right, so you've you've gone through the lesson that did happen uh, in the last class, and now you're we're looking to take this forward. So we have our idea of our n-type material and our p-type material. Now let's get clear about this. Okay. N type just to recap, N type material right contains okay it has its silicon but we dope it with phosphorus to give it an extra electron as a charge carrier. But remember what we did, okay? We take a silicon atom, a neutral silicon atom out, and we replace it with a neutral phosphorus atom. Okay? So therefore the material is still neutral. For every extra electron that we're interested in, there happens to be buried in the nucleus an extra proton. So while this is appears to be negatively charged, it's not. It is n-type, and that's why we say n-type. It is neutral, but it has extra electrons as charge carriers. And the same applies with the boron. Okay, with the boron, remember from the last lesson, Okay, we have one less electron, so we have a gap, and we call that a hole, and we call it a positive hole because it acts like a positive charge, as we saw in the little clip with Pylos, right? Okay, you have, so it is, again, you've replaced a neutral silicon atom with a neutral boron atom, so it is still a neutral material. It appears to be positive charge because we have an extra positive charge, an extra hole as a charge carrier, so we call it P-type, but it is neutral, and this is crucial to what we do now okay that's the that's the bottom line okay so oops right okay so what happens then when you put p a p type material and an n type material together we get what's called a p n junction right okay so let's have a look so i'm going to draw it okay so you have your p type material and you have your n type material okay we've stuck them together. Now in reality what happens is you have, uh, if, if this is made, you have a, a new uh, a intrinsic, a pure semiconductor, and you do a part of p-type, part of n-type, you don't actually stick them together like that, but same idea. Right, p-type material, okay, excess holes. So we're just gonna draw them, just, just to give us an idea uh, with extra, with holes like that. So that's, that's designating a hole, right? Not very high, bro. We're designating a hole with what looks like a hole. We'll put a key down here. Hole. And we're going to designate the n type material with minuses, which we're going to put down as our key. Electrons. Okay. Electrons are the negative charge carriers, holes are the positive charge carriers. We treat hole, a hole as a real entity, positive charge carrier. That's the model. We're happy with the model. Okay. So what happens here? And this is the important thing. Well, here at the junction, okay, and I'm going to a different color, pretty dramatic and get red. Okay, so at the junction, this is known as the PN junction. Okay, what happens is you have holes available, which are gaps for electrons, and you have free electrons available. And now, let's get clear. The model we are using here is a very basic model. Okay, so the, one of these models where you kind of look at and say, what if, okay? We don't ask what if, we're happy with this basic model. This is the second level physics model. This is the second level anywhere in the world model. So it's not as though uh, we're, we're hiding anything from you, okay? So think about it, okay? We have holes and we have electrons. And what effectively happens is they combine, okay? They combine. So the electrons fall into the holes, okay? When they combine, instead of having two charge carriers and you have zero charge carriers. Suddenly, you've gone from loads of charge carriers to none because the electrons fall into the hole, the electrons are no longer available, the hole is gone, okay? There's no hole left, okay? So basically, what we can do, okay, just to give us the, the, the simple model, we'll just indicate that by just showing, look, the electrons falling into the holes. Okay, so we're moving the electrons. You could move the holes, we're gonna move the electrons. It, it doesn't matter, we'll move the electrons. Right, now let's go through, let's, uh, what I want to interest, uh, of interest of here is, this part of the material is still P-type. That is neutral. This part of the material is still N-type. That is neutral. 
get that be clear on that if you're not happy with that you're going to get on to me okay that is crucial okay they're they're n type and p type right here let's watch what has happened okay electrons have moved from the n type across the junction to fill the hole so excess electrons have moved no the protons buried in the nuclei that are keeping it neutral aren't moving so in this case the electrons have moved so what has happened to this little part this little part here has become negatively charged negatively charged and this little part here has lost electrons okay so it has become positively charged so now we have this setup so no we didn't do anything we just put the p and the n junction together the electrons in the holes interacted and in the central layer here we have an insulating region okay so we're going to indicate that is an insulating region of no charge carriers or very few okay there will sort of be some charge carriers due to it being a pure semiconductor and okay there's a special name for this it has lost its charges okay and a term in english okay you're all wonderful english students okay for something that has lost its depletion okay something is depleted okay when you run a marathon your energy reserves are depleted okay so we call it the depletion layer okay so this is called the depletion layer so depleted means lacking okay so it's a depletion layer what's the depletion in depletion in charge carriers no charge carriers it's an insulator okay so suddenly this pn junction is actually an insulator okay it doesn't allow charge to pass through because it has a big insulating gap in the middle right so that's where we are at the moment now what i'm going to do is i'm going to redraw this up high and we're going to um we're going to uh, go into a bit more detail on it right no there you go right with up top right okay so let's have a look we're going to now apply a uh, voltage an external voltage okay so the first we have two possibilities okay so we have our pn junctions so we're going to we're going to divide our page into two okay we have our pn junction so we, our first possibility is we're going to connect the positive of a power supply to the p and the negative to the n in the other scenario what i do is i'll swap the power supply i'll just reverse the connection of the power supply so i'm leaving the p and the n in the same positions which is probably easier to demonstrate okay so let's take this scenario first okay this scenario first with the p and the, with the n okay so these are the holes and we have a depletion layer and we have the electrons here and this is plus and this is minus now look at this plus minus this here acts as a little power supply and is driving the charges from plus to minus so it's, it's driving them clockwise whereas the, the, the applied voltage here is driving them anti-clockwise so this little this this uh, depletion layer the insulating layer acts like a battery acts like a power supply but its voltage is in the opposite direction and we have we call this voltage well we're back to the high quality physics uh, names it's a voltage and it's at the junction so we call it the junction voltage okay so it's the junction voltage okay and effectively what happens watch what happens okay we've plus here plus charge positive holes they will be repelled so they're going to be forced to the right the electrons are connected to the negative they are going to be forced to the left and what's actually happening is you are forcing charge carriers into the depletion layer so you're going to break down the depletion layer you're going to break down the depletion layer okay so current will flow but you have to get over this junction voltage first and we'll have a look at that in the uh, iv graph that we do for the diode in section a okay we'll see where that comes from so let's get clear you have a depletion layer and you have a junction voltage until the junction voltage is overcome there is a very high this is an insulator so effectively no current will flow once the junction voltage is overcome the insulator is gone and effectively we've no resistance left and we should get a huge current so we'll go from no current 
to huge current almost immediately. So we'll have a look at the we'll have a look at the uh, section A experiments in a minute on that. Okay, so from none to huge almost immediately. Okay, so basically, if I connect it like this, plus the power supply to the P, minus the power supply to the N, it is called connecting it in forward bias, and it allows current to flow once the junction voltage is overcome. Now the way we draw that, okay, this. Okay, a PN junction is a diode. So you remember a diode, a diode allows current flow in one direction only. A PN junction, from to insert, a PN junction is a diode. Okay, and the symbol we have for a diode is a triangle and a line. Okay, a triangle and a line. All right, and in this case, watch, the arrow effectively indicates the direction of the plus, of, plus, of the charge. Remember, charges plus charges, uh, sorry, current is the flow of plus charges. So it's the flow of current. So the arrow within the diode, in the triangle of the diode, indicates the direction of the charge. So here we're in forward bias, okay? We're in forward bias, okay? So basically, the depletion air gets broken down and current flows once the junction voltage is overcome. That's forward bias. Reverse bias is the opposite, okay? Reverse bias is the opposite, so let's draw it. If we draw it like that, so let's watch, watch what's happening up here. Okay, we have our depletion layer again. So watch what's happening in this case. Well, it's the opposite, okay, or it, it's, it's, it's a disaster. The plus charges are being attracted to the minus. The minus charges are being attracted to the plus. The depletion layer, instead of getting smaller, gets bigger, and effectively no current flows. Okay, depletion layer gets bigger, no current flows. You are actually making the insulation layer bigger. Okay, no current flows. Now, there is, one final thing, okay, there is a, a little caveat on it, okay, at the very, very end. If the current, uh, sorry, there is always, in reverse bias, there's always a small current flow. So because remember, let's go back to the previous one. We talk about an N-type semiconductor where the majority charge carriers are electrons, because there is a minority of holes as well. And the same over here for an N-type, or for a P-type, the majority charge carriers are holes, and there's a minority charge carriers of electrons. The minority carriers are effectively in forward bias. Now, it's more complicated than the model, okay? But it, like, think of that, that the reverse bias, in reverse bias, the minority carriers are in forward bias, so you get a tiny current in reverse bias, okay? A tiny current. No, in the order of microamps, really, really small, okay? So that's the basics of it. That's how it works. Uh, in the next clip, we'll look at the experiment and we'll see what, uh, we'll, we should be able to explain the graph from this now, okay? Very good.